Rita, and today I'm here to show you how to make this awesome kite that is also a mosaic and a sun catcher. All right. In your kit today, you have a piece of yarn, a white crayon, about 30 pieces of tissue paper, a few pieces of laminated scraps, two pieces of black construction paper, and two pieces of clear contact paper. What you're going to need from home today is a stapler or some tape, a pair of scissors, and a ruler. Let's get started. We're going to start with one piece of black construction paper, your white crayon, and your ruler. What we're going to make is that diamond shape for the frame of our kite mosaic. Now, when we measure our short side, we notice that it is nine inches wide. Well, half of nine inches is four and a half inches. Do you know how to find four and a half inches on your ruler, friends? There's four, and then we need to go halfway to the five. So right there, four and a half inches. So I'm going to measure it right on the very edge of your paper, four and a half inches. And you're just going to make a little mark with your white crayon. And then we're going to go to the other end of the paper, and we're going to do the exact same thing four and a half inches right at the edge. Then we're going to go on the longer side of our paper and we'll notice that that is exactly 12 inches. It should take up your whole ruler. Well, friends, do you know what half of 12 is? Did you say six? You would be correct. So again, we're going to find the number six on our ruler and we're going to go right on the very edge and say six inches. Then we're going to flip our paper over and again on that long side and we're going to go six inches right on the very edge. Okay. So now you have four little dots on your piece of construction paper. And we're going to join those dots. We're going to use our ruler again. And we're going to connect from the short side, long side. We're going to connect from the long side to the short side. And then from the short side to the long side and long to short and short to long. So now you have that nice diamond shape on your paper. Give you an idea of why Miss Rita says to put it on the very edge of your paper. Let me show you something. Some friends might think I'll line up my ruler on my paper and I'll make my mark there and there. Okay, so this is what happens 
if you join your dots at a different spot than on the edge. It will still make a diamond shape, but it'll be a lot smaller. So we're going to go ahead and use the one where I went all the way out to the edges. And you're going to take your scissors. I'm just going to cut out Save your scraps. You're going to need them in a little bit. Okay. Well, now we need to make a frame and cut out the inside of our kite shape, our diamond. But we're still going to use our ruler and our crayon. We're going to measure about an inch from one, uh, we're going to measure about an inch. from these corners or points, or if you want to get super fancy, vertices. Isn't that a great word? Vertices? All right, and then we're just going to do the same thing and connect those so there you can see the outline of our frame. So you're probably saying, but Miss Rita, how do I cut inside? There's a nifty trick for that. We're going to fold, but not crease. You're going to kind of leave it loose, our paper. Now take our scissors and make a little cut right in the middle. You can see my finger poking out. And that gives us a place to start cutting with our scissors. What I usually do is I cut out from the middle to each of those corners or vertices so that I kind of have four triangles in there and then I'm just going to cut my four lines that I drew very carefully And there I have the frame of my kite. I'm going to set that aside because now we need to make these lines that cut our mosaic into pieces. So I'm going to take these scraps and we're done being super precise. Now we're just going to kind of eyeball it and cut some strips. You probably won't need to cut up all the scrap triangles. And it so now we're going to put our scraps over to the side and we're going to take our first piece of contact paper. Contact paper comes on a roll, which is why yours is kind of curly. And it has a paper backing on it because it's sticky on one side. So we're going to start with a corner and we're just going to peel off that paper backing.
The only thing you want to be sure is that the sticky part doesn't fold back on itself. Okay, we're going to lay it down, sticky side up. We're going to take our black frame and we're going to set it right on our piece of contact paper. And you can press it down a little bit to make sure it sticks. And now we get to be a little bit arty and decorative. You're going to take your scraps and lay them in a design that you like. Maybe you want it to be really, you want to divide it into three. Maybe you like it a little more abstract. You can do whatever you want with your frame. Now we get to have a little bit of fun. We're going to go ahead and put our paper scraps on. And you can do it any way you like. You can make patterns. You can be random. You can use lots of different colors or just a few. You do what makes you feel good. You're just going to want to be sure that all your spaces are covered. You can overlap them a little bit, or you don't have to. You can line them right up. Of course, once it's down, it's kind of you got to kind of peel it to get it back up again. I really I like, like these white ones with sparkles on them. I'm putting some information in the notes about mosaics. Some mosaics are very precise and they use the little pieces to make a pattern. And some are more free form, like ours. Originally, people used tile or ceramic to make their mosaics. So when you have all your pieces down and you're happy with the way the back of it looks, you can take a quick peek and see what it looks like from the other side. Just be careful that you don't stick your contact paper onto your table at home. Okay, this is the trickiest thing we have to do today. You're going to take your second piece of contact paper. We're going to make a contact paper sandwich. Now, you want to try really hard not to get wrinkles in this. So what we're going to do, we're going to just peel back, a, I don't know, maybe a third of our contact paper. It doesn't have to be super precise, but you just want to be sure that you're going to cover your whole type. You're going to press it down. You probably want a helper for this part. 
is you're going to very slowly peel the paper off. And as you peel the paper off, you're going to push it down as you go. Trying very hard not to get a lot of wrinkles and bubbles. And if you do, you can go ahead and smooth them out as best you can with your ruler or the edge of your scissors. All right, so mine got a little bit stuck to my table, but I'm gonna peel it right off. Not too bad. Now we're gonna take our scissors and we're just going to cut around the edge of our contact paper to get all the excess off. This can absolutely go in the trash. Okay, so the last thing we need on our kite is the tail. And that's what your yarn is for. So decide which is the top of your kite and which is the part where the tail is gonna attach. And you're just gonna use your stapler to staple your yarn. onto your kite. And then to make the little fabric pieces that people put on their kite, we're gonna make this into a bow tie shape like this. But I promised you we were done with precise part. I'm gonna show you how to eyeball making a little bow shape. Take your paper, fold it in half. You can crease it a little bit. Okay, this is going to be the skinny part. The fold will be the skinny part of your bow. And then the outside edges where they touch is going to be the wide part. So all you're going to do is cut a little triangle. You want to make sure that you leave some in the middle. And there are your bows. Let me show you that again. So you're going to take your scrap, fold it in half, and just cut out to the edges. So we left that middle piece. You see how that's a little bit, it's about as wide as my thumb. And then we cut out to the edges. You can also cut from the edges down to the middle whichever works best for you. And then we're going to attach those to our kite. Again, we're just gonna use our stapler. If you don't have a stapler at home, you can absolutely use tape. And there you have your mosaic kite. I hope you hang yours up in your window so that you can let the light shine through and make you smile and think about sunny spring days. And I hope as I travel around Hershey, I look up and I see some beautiful kites hanging in windows. And I'll see you really soon for more Crafting Carries at Hershey Library.